Hello and welcome to part one of the MotleyPixel.com HDR tutorial. What is HDR? For those of you who don't know, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. So in this tutorial we are going to take three photographs, all at different exposures, and merge them together to create an HDR photograph. Now, whether you're shooting with a point and shoot, or shooting with a more advanced digital SLR system, you can take photographs and create HDR images following the following prerequisites. First prerequisite, you need any camera with the capability to manually adjust EV, that is exposure value. You need to have the capability to shift the exposure value, negative and plus, that is underexposed and overexposed, and also take a normal exposure or zero EV exposure. The second thing, as a prerequisite, preferred software such as Photomatics and Adobe Photoshop for further post-processing. A tripod is highly recommended, a subject that has zero to little movement, and a good scene such as a storm front or stormy clouds. Last for part one, I'd like to touch base with the uh, EV exposure value settings and how you would use an advanced digital SLR system. Many of the advanced digital SLR systems, such as this Canon 30D, has a function called AEB, Auto Exposure Bracketing. Please read the manual. If you do have a system that will do AEB, it will save you a lot of time and you will get better performance. Essentially, AEB will take uh, usually three exposures back to back and you can set the EV value for each exposure. In my case, for the example I will show in this tutorial of the barn with the cloudy sky, I took a minus two EV, a zero EV, and then a plus two EV using AEB on this system. Now, if you're using a normal point and shoot camera system, some of the more advanced point and shoot cameras, they do offer AEB, and that's a plus. Um, but don't worry, if you don't have AEB, but you have EV controls, that's not a problem either. Again, it's highly recommended to set, set up on a tripod and if you're doing adjustments between each of the three, four, or five exposures that you take, be sure that you move as quickly as possible so that you limit time between each exposure. This concludes part one of the MotleyPixel.com HDR tutorial. Thank you. Welcome back. This is part two of the MotleyPixel.com HDR tutorial. Now that we've captured our images, all three of our exposures, and saved them to our computer, in this case, HDR tutorial folder on my desktop. The RAWs are named normal over and under to signify their exposure values. We open Photomatix Pro 3. You open Photomatix Pro 3, the first page that you come to is the Workflow Shortcuts dialog box. We want to generate HDR image, browse, and we want to open all three or however many exposures you have in this case. Click OK to open all the exposures. Next dialog is Generate HDR Options. You may not have these by default checked, but ensure that you have the aligned sources checked and attempt to reduce ghosting artifacts checked. Leave everything else as default and click OK. Now the system will start converting the RAW and merging the images. OK. Process is almost complete. OK. Once the process is complete, uh, you will see just a preview of the merged exposures. Uh, it never looks great at this stage. Um, the next thing you want to do, though, is you want to go to the tone mapping. So click the tone mapping button, and it will bring us to the tone mapping and editing screen. Now you may have medium or small radio button checked for the preview. Just check the radio button uh, to fit the screen so you have a larger preview. Now over on the Tone Mapping settings, you're going to have Detail Enhancers tab and Tone Compressor tab. I have never used Tone Compressor. I don't recommend using it. You can try it. Details Enhancer is the normal workflow I use to generate my HDRs. Marching down the settings here, the Strength, this is the HDR Strength. I normally hover around 90 to 95. It defaults uh, roughly at 60. Color Saturation, self-explanatory, I think it defaults around 50. The next settings we have here is light smoothing. Light smoothing is going to produce your most dramatic effects and changes. 
to the far left, you're going to have more of an artsy type surrealistic image. And over to the far right, the smoothing, uh, light smoothing is very low. And in this case, you're not going to see as much HDR at this setting. So what I normally do is hover around the three quarter to one half mark. Next setting is luminosity. This is just going to increase your luminosity and normally I have it around four. I think it defaults to one. The next area is the histogram and I'm not sure if you took note of this but as you make changes to all of these settings on this tab you will see the histogram shift. Uh, so keep in mind you want to try to keep it to be um, in the center the peak in the center and a nice smooth lots of surface area underneath here for lots of data. Next section is the uh, tone, color, and micro and smoothing tabs. Normally I just stay on the tone tab. Uh, I start here and I adjust my white point and black point. For this particular image I wanted my white point around 0.7. I think it's quite a bit lower around 0.2 by default. Black I have up to about 0.2 percent and gamma I have at 1. Moving on down there is a back arrow to undo any changes, previous changes and there's a preset. Here you can load and save settings. I'm going to go back up to color. Color is an important tab. Um, I do shift with this uh, from time to time. Temperature, saturation, highlights and shadows. Micro setting here. I very rarely use micro setting as well as uh, the smoothing setting. Now we're ready to process our HDR image. Alright, image is just about finished processing here. Now you see the final resultant image here. Last you want to file, save as. I highly recommend saving as 16-bit TIFF. And we're going to leave it at under and two more on the desktop 16-bit TIFF so we can render it in Photoshop and uh, do some noise removal and other adjustments. Stay tuned for part three of the MotleyPixel.com HDR tutorial. Welcome back. This is part three of the MotleyPixel.com HDR tutorial. In this last part, we will address the final post-processing cleaning up of the 16-bit TIFF HDR that we generated with Photomatix. I'm going to go ahead and launch Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to browse to our desktop and open that 16-bit TIFF that we generated with Photomatix. Here it is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start with duplicating the layer. Okay, the layer is duplicated. I want to next start with a layer mask. Select the layer. I'm going to go in and do a small adjustment here. Adjustment, shadow and highlights. And bring the shadow amount down to zero. Highlights up to about 20. Go OK. Next, I'm going to select our mask with a white paintbrush, large with hardness 0, large paintbrush of 911 pixels, and I'm going to paint away a little bit of that contrast that I added in the previous step. That looks good. Now I'm going to add another layer and duplicate. Okay, I'm going to go up to my filters. I go to Noise Ninja. I have a saved profile to my liking with Noise Ninja. You can use any noise removal software. Highly recommend investing in some good noise removal software. Click OK. It's going to remove the noise. Noise reduction is complete. Next step, I'm going to change the mode to 8 bits per channel so I can save as JPEG. I'm going to save, file, save as JPEG to my desktop. Save it as copy to the desktop. Maximum and it's going to hover around 6 meg. Okay, it's saved as a JPEG on the desktop. I'm going to close Adobe Photoshop. The final photograph in JPEG form. If you want to look at my version of this full processed, it is available at MotleyPixel.com under the stock photography landing page. You can download the full resolution for free by using the download arrow in the bottom right. I want to thank you for tuning in to the MotleyPixel.com HDR tutorial. Goodbye.